In a couple of previous videos, we've looked at how to create things like a flyer or a handout. Now we want to look at creating a resume. So I'm going to do this from scratch. Don't even have Word open now. Uh, I'm going to come here to my start. Just launch the Word app. So when I start with something like this, you'll notice that I have a home and I can say, well, I want to choose new. So when I go to create a new document, I can create either a blank document. That's what we've shown before. Or I can choose a ready-made document template. And then all I have to do is just fill in what I'm interested in. Some things work really well, others not so much. Uh, a lot of times you'll find some of these resumes and uh, they're really cool looking, but they don't work really well. Actually, a simple resume that's easy to read is really important, especially if you want to be read by an automated system. Maybe you'll use something nice like this if you are handing a resume to a person directly, but if you are going to upload it online, it needs to be very simple and easy to read. When you go to create a resume, you want to make sure you don't have things that are going to require a picture of yourself. Uh, at least here in the United States, it's a big no-no for a lot of reasons. Uh, there's other things in here you can kind of look at. I'm going to choose here a modern chronological resume. Uh, those tend to work pretty well uh, for a lot of different reasons. We're going to go ahead and start here. Now, I'll need to download this template, so it's going to tell me how big it is and stuff like that. I'm going to click on Create. And when I did that, it went and downloaded it, and I have a ready-made template. Now, I can come in here, depending upon what I've done career-wise, uh, how long I've been in my career, I can make a lot of different changes to this. My first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and change my first name. And we're just going to pick Joe Smith as an example. Now, if this information is too small, remember I can come up here to view and I can make it bigger or I can use the slider. Maybe choose page width and now I can clearly see. A resume always wants to have things like your address. your phone number, and as a minimum, your email. A lot of people are going to want to include their LinkedIn profile. Make sure you do that if you have one. It may not help you, but it definitely won't hurt you. And if you happen to work with someone who is interested in LinkedIn, they want to see it as an example of you staying up with technology and things like that, it's really good to have there. Now, your Twitter, blog, and maybe a personal portfolio is not as necessary. Depends a lot upon the type of job that you're doing. If you're going to go work as a social media expert, then you definitely want to have things like that. If you're going to work as a graphic designer, a portfolio is definitely a necessary thing you want to incorporate. Add them if they're useful to you and to your type of career field. If not, feel free to delete them out. Up here we'll have a brief summary, and, and this is kind of like what you're trying to look for. Uh, a lot of people are saying to go ahead and remove this. It's not as important as it once was. Uh, but if it is something that you want to have, especially if you're just starting out, it's a good place to put in there. At this point, you have experience and education. Now, depending upon where you are in your career, this is going to vary as to which one's going to go first. If you are just graduating from college or maybe even high school, you might want to put your education first. In which case, you're going to put the month and year that you graduated. You'll put your title. You can abbreviate Bachelor of Science as BS or Bachelor of Arts as BA if you want. Uh, some people will write that out. And then the name of your school. A lot of times people will leave it at that. If you did something big, like you worked on a big project, you had a good GPA, maybe you won some special awards, put them there. If you didn't, then leave that out. 
a lot of times people just want to see that you did graduate and that's important. For most people, all you want to put is your college degree. Sometimes they'll only put your last degree. Sometimes they'll put two if you have two separate or different degrees, maybe in slightly different fields. So I knew someone who had a degree in psychology and then was getting their master's degree in computer science. Specifically, they were working in artificial intelligence, taking their psychology degree and applying that to computer science. So they would list both of them. If you only have a bachelor's degree, that's fine too. Put that there. Typically, you do not need to incorporate an associate's or a high school degree, even if you're just starting out. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete these as they are not necessary. Here, I'm going to put job experience. Now, hopefully this is experience that is going to relate directly to the career that I'm looking at going in. Now, especially if you're just starting out, you may not have some job experience in these areas, and that's okay. You can put other job experience here, too. A lot of times companies are looking for, have you done work? And so they're going to want to know how long you've worked for a company, i.e., do you have some stick to the job title, and the company you work for. Some people also incorporate where you worked, especially if you worked in different areas, and maybe you changed jobs because you had to move. Typically, you want to keep this to the last 10 years or less. If you have too many years of experience, you might find yourself actually being a victim of ageism, and that's a bad thing. Make sure you provide information that's relative to what you're going for if you have it. Make sure you provide accurate information, including dates to and from. Typically, you only need month and year, and you'll start with the most recent first and then go down from there. If you're currently working there, a lot of times people will put current. List key things about your job, responsibilities you had, big achievements you had, especially if you can show a number amount. So you increase sales by 10%, you save 20% efficiency, you incorporated things faster and had quicker turnaround. Whatever you can do, put it in there. Often bullet points or short sentences work really well. No one wants to sit down and read a huge three-paragraph long block of text. Keep it short, simple, very accurate, and relative to your job. Don't fall into the trap of fibbing on your resume. It's too easy to find out this information nowadays. Once you have experience and education filled out, list some of your skills, especially if you don't have a full resume. Now, after you've been working for a dozen years or so, your skills aren't as important. They tend to go up into your job experience and are found there. Most resumes look better if they're free force to one full page at least, but usually no more than two pages. Now, your activities can be things like, now, under your activities, you might list things like clubs that you attended in school, especially if they were professional in nature, doing some type of volunteer work in the community, other things that might be involved with making you look as to be a better candidate, a more mature candidate, or someone specifically working in your field. So if you're volunteering or maybe working on a project that's not necessarily you're getting paid for, but you can show off how it applies to your field, Activities is a great place to put something like this. Also, if you have certifications, you might want to list this, and any special skills that might be beneficial, such as if you're multilingual. Those types of things are great to put in a place like this. We'll back this out to 100%. You can see how it fits in, looks nice, and that's kind of what you want to be looking for as far as how you're going to fill out your resume using a template. You'll see it's got ready-made blocks that you can just easily put in there and replace stuff and let you know how to do it. Now, just because you have a template doesn't mean you're locked into this specific color scheme. Remember, you can go to your design tab and choose different formatting if you're interested. So based upon what you're interested in, what you're doing, you can look for a couple different things. You can also change your colors and your fonts if you prefer. Once you have the document the way you want, save it, and now it's ready to be used.